keeping you safe well. Just pray that the Lord would move this morning. Believe and, and trust in everything that he has spoken unto us through Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, we come to you this morning. We just ask, Lord, that your spirit, Lord, would have his way. Lord, in this place, Lord, through the singers and the musicians, Lord, through the ones that speak, Lord, the ones that come and hear, Lord, that he would have free course in their heart and in their life, Lord, to confirm, Lord, what you have done for them, Lord, that they would be confident unto the very end in what you've done for them on, on that old rugged cross, Lord, by the giving of your life, Lord, that we could have life, Lord. We're just asking that the Spirit would move in, in this place, Lord, to challenge us, Lord, to convict us, Lord, to do exactly what the Spirit does. And, and thank God, Lord, that we can come to the throne room of grace by the blood of Jesus Christ this morning, Lord, to cleanse us and to keep us, Lord, and to help us, Lord, to continue to run this race with patience, Lord. Help us to continue to do this, Lord. We're asking, Lord, that you would touch the meetings, Lord, throughout the day, all the meetings, Lord, where your name is being lifted up high above all, and, Lord, to draw men unto you and unto the Father, Lord. We're asking that the you would touch each and every place, Lord, that's lifting up that name, Lord, and those that aren't lifting up that name, Lord, we're just asking that you would uh, cause repentance to come into their heart and to their life, Lord, that they would come back to the faith, Lord, to, to the one who loved them and gave himself for them, Lord. We just ask those things today, Lord, looking to you, Lord, the author and the finisher of our faith this morning. Lord, we just ask that your spirit would move, Lord, it, encourage, anoint everything that's done and said, Lord, to bring you glory. We ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. How y'all doing this morning? All right. We're going to praise the Lord this morning. We're going to praise the Lord this morning. <laughs> Amen. Let's give him glory this morning.
looking at this a while ago and 
I was thinking, God has never failed you yet. He won't never fail you. At some words, you just look there, and I'm thinking, is that, is that right? God ain't never failed me. He ain't going to. Now, I might fail him, but I, it ain't no way the Lord's going to fail me yet. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You have the victory this morning. Do you believe it? Do you really believe it? In these times and these days and times we're living in, we're going to need that victory. We got to know what side we on. Because Lord Jesus Christ, is, he's there beside us. He lives within us. So we, he knows exactly what we're thinking and what we're going to do the next few minutes or next hour, next day, next year, whatever it might be. He knows. He knows everything. So why do we fret? Why do we worry over things like this? He is our Savior, and he always will be if we just keep our eyes upon him. Thank you, Jesus. Feel the wind blowing across the sea of life. Angry waves grow higher as they roll. The lightning paints the heavens. My ship is tossed about, almost devouring my soul. Jesus is 
with me when the storm clouds gather. He's standing by my side when I hear the thunder roll. He holds my hand when I begin to tremble. When the winds of this world keep blowing strong And you wonder why I'm smiling through the thunder And you wonder why my soul feels no alarm Well, there's an unseen hand God in my vessel the time of a storm well you wonder why i'm smiling through the thunder and you wonder why my soul feels no alarm and there's an unseen hand god in my vessel time of a storm he's my harbor in the time of a storm yes he's my harbor in the time of a storm yes hallelujah he's our harbor thank you lord thank you. well you wonder why i'm smiling through the thunder hallelujah you wonder why my soul feels no alarm <laughs> hey because i know in who i have believed amen i know that he's well able to finish what he has begun in me long as i stay in the place where that work continues to flow amen and that is staying with faith in what Christ did at Calvary. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you gave your life that we could have the victory and that we could be born again and walk as we ought to walk in these last days. Amen. There's a lot around us that wants us to walk another way. They want us to go their way. They want us to compromise what they think's right. But I'm sticking with what the Bible says, amen. I'm sticking with what's written, hallelujah. And ain't looking back, praise God. Because what's written, let me tell you something, because of what's written is what you're going to be judged by. Paul said you're going to be judged by my gospel. And Paul's gospel was Christ and him crucified. That is the only gospel, and that's why we come this Sunday, amen, to hear this gospel. And to give to this precious work in this region. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So I come to you this morning asking you to do your very best. The Bible says where your heart is, is where your treasure is also. Amen. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says, so what are you storing up in these last days? You storing up 401k? You storing up? compound life insurance policy what you what you storing today amen i tell you the best thing that you can store up is things in heaven amen and the lord just asked to do your very best this morning we want you to go home but we want you to go home with your pockets empty and your hearts full amen <laughs> hallelujah that's what we want we want you to go home with your hearts full amen that's why you came this morning. For those that are on, uh, that's watching by live stream, thank God for those. We passed the offering plate as well in your living room. You can give by going to crosswayministries.org. You can hit the donate button, and it'll show you exactly right there how to give. It's uh, not complicated. If you can't give, that way you can give by check or money order to Crossway Ministries, making it out, mailing that to P.O. Box 3, uh, let me, hey, I'm so sorry, uh, 9097, yeah, P.O. Uh, Box 9097, amen, uh, that's Greenwood, Mississippi, 
389-30. Amen. Thank God. I'm uh, stumbling there. Amen. But that's all right. Uh, I hope I made it clear. Amen. Let's pray over this offering. Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the giver. We thank you, Lord, for the ones that are able to, to give and those that may not even be able to give, Lord, but they come by faith, Lord. We just ask that you would bless those that would give, Lord, that you would multiply the offering to meet the need, Lord, to keep uh, this uh, gospel going out in this region. Lord, we thank you so very much, Lord, for what you've done through your son, Lord, that we can come and give and be a part of what you are doing in these last days, Lord. And we ask that you would bless it, Lord, abundantly, Lord, meeting the need, breaking it. In Jesus' name, amen. Everybody come and give. Tell everyone what it is to be a child of God, how good it is. Amen. Praise God. is something that everybody wants, right? Can you imagine during the time when Jesus was on the earth, those um, 33 and a half years, that there was no war, there was no conflict anywhere else around when he was here. Imagine what it's going to be like when we get to heaven, when we finally see our Jesus, the one that died for us and shed his precious blood for us. Ain't that going to be grand? Because, I mean, we can't walk throughout the day today and somebody's throwing something out there that that will get you, if you're like me, bite my fingernails until they too are quick. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy how that sometimes we, we if we, we're not real careful, we can turn something on on TV and it will tell you this and it will get your mind wandering about this over here. And if we would just keep our eyes upon Jesus Christ, I mean, he said, take up the cross daily and follow me. He didn't say that just to be saying something, but he, was, he wanted us to depend upon him daily, every day. Our, our, my prayer is that I want to walk in the Spirit at every moment of every day. It's hard to do that, ain't it? It's hard to walk in the Spirit. It's because, of what, as I was saying one week ago, about the, all the voices that's going around, you know, it's trying to grab your attention, trying to pull you over to it. And see, Jesus never intended it for that to be. And he wants us to look to him daily. It's a, we live in a day of perilous times. The perilous times is not something that 
well, you know, they're going to do this, they're going to do that, and it's not going to bother us. It's going to happen to us eventually if the Lord don't take us out before. But we must look to him, and only the only true peace is through Jesus Christ. We've got to get our minds on him. Because people, you can hear voices and stuff, all these things that come about, and it will scare you to death if you let it. If you if you sit there and ponder on all the things that they're saying, that peop, these people are saying. We must, if we don't grab a hold of Jesus now, it's going to be hard later. It's going to be even harder later. Jesus Christ is our answer to every every man's problem. He is our answer. And the only peace that we're going to be able to have to have our eyes focused upon him, our minds, our hearts, and everything focused upon him. And I'm not saying it's easy because sometimes it gets hard. But you know what? Our God is able. He is able to overcome all the fear, all the anxiety, all these things that people are going through today. He is able or he's not. You see what I'm saying? Either the church wakes up and says, okay, he is able. I don't care what happens, what I see, what I hear, or whatever. I'm going to go on on Jesus. That's, that's the only thing I care about. We have to make our mind up now because it's going to be harder later if you don't. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Life is a few days. Okay, we're going to try this again, people. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Life is a few days of trouble. A wise man once said. But I'll not complain, for I'm sheltered, I'm clothed, and I'm fed. But many's the trial, my wants and my dreams put me. Sweet peace I have, 
Lord, in you. The only real peace that I church sing is to him now. Thank you, Lord. Grace. Great grace that has pardoned 
all of our sins. Thank God for His grace. His grace. What peace do we have with the Father through Jesus Christ? When the last can of beanie weenies is in the cabinet, when the tank's on E, when the account's negative, when everything around you seems to be falling apart, let me encourage you to look to Him because He's well able to bring peace. He's well able to bring grace in your time of need. The Bible tells us to not set our affections on the things on this earth, but to set them on the things that are above, that sit at the right hand of God. That grace and that peace that flows from Calvary, from what Christ did for you by the laying down of His life, no man can rob you of that peace unless you Give your ear to it. Amen. But if you will stay determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and Him crucified and keep your faith anchored there, grace will come. Floods of grace. The Bible says where sin abound, grace much more did abound. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all your... Thank you, singers and musicians. Thank you for all that the Lord's done this morning. What a great place that uh, all, all that was sung this morning and everything that was done is no doubt the Lord uh, magnifying what He is wanting to deal with us <clears throat> this morning about. And uh, I thank God for all that He has done for us on the cross. We're only scratching the surface, amen, right now. But oh, what a, great, what a great place it is to be anchored in Jesus Christ, growing in His grace and knowledge, amen. Everything that's going on around us is pulling us to and fro. Maybe even family members, may even be co-workers, may be even your neighbor, may be, even, but when it all boils down to, it boils down to self. It boils down to are you going to believe this gospel to the very end because everything around you is trying to pull you and toss you to and fro but you my friend you brothers and sisters let me tell you it's up to you to keep this faith if you'll keep the faith he'll keep you amen he is he's faithful amen he's faithful to keep you if you keep his ways amen Hallelujah. Amen. So if you got your Bibles, let's open up to the book of Hebrews. Amen. We've prayed uh, this morning, and I've prayed over this word. It's saturated in the prayers and the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. And we're just going to believe the Lord to show us exactly what we need to hear this morning. Amen. And we're believing for others as well out there preaching this gospel that they would uh, uh, get on board with uh, what Christ did at the cross and be determined not to know anything but that because that's the only thing that's going to help us to endure in the days ahead. That's the only thing that's going to keep us marching forward. Amen. All right. Let's open up to the book of Matthew, chapter 26. Amen. Chapter 26. Hallelujah. And I'm going to start in 36, amen, but I'm going to back up in 31, but right now I'm going to start in 36, amen. And the Bible says, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place called Gethsemane, and said unto the disciples, everybody got it? Matthew 26, 36. Amen. And said unto the disciples, Now, Jesus with them, he, Jesus came with them unto a place called Gethsemane. 
and said unto the disciples, Set you here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and two sons of Zebedee, which would be John and James, and began, listen, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then he said unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. He is telling the disciples to tarry here and watch with him. Amen. This is all speaking spiritually here. It's all speaking spiritually here. And I'm going to bring it out after I get done reading. Amen. Let the Lord use me to, to bring this illustration out. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Amen. Not as I will, but as you will. Amen. Praise God. Now, I want to bring out the illustration of Gethsemane here. Amen. That word Gethsemane in the Hebrew text, it does it it's a meaning there, and it is a oil press. That word Gethsemane means a oil press. It was a place where they pressed oil. It was a pre a place where he that that it was being pressed. And you think about all the scripture the scriptures that we just read. That Jesus felt very sorrowful and heavy even unto death. I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, this morning. That if Jesus had to press in, come on now, if he had to press in to go to Calvary and to give his life there, all the more are we going to have to press in. We're going to have to press in. Because there ain't but, there ain't but one option. You're either going to press in or you're going to press out. You're either going to press in to the things of God and let God do what God wants to do. His will, not your will. Or you're going to press out. And the Bible shows us this. The Bible shows us this very well. If you'll back up to verse, I tell you what, I'm not going to go there yet. I'm going to save that for later. Let's continue to read right here. Now we know that the, the, the place of Gethsemane was a place where that it was a press, where Jesus was being pressed, amen. And I, I want to read, I want you to go over to Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 and I want you to see what the Apostle Paul said about press. You got it? Say I got it. Say amen. Say something. Got it. Philippians 3, 13. It says, brethren. Oh, he's speaking to us today. Brethren. He says, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forget those things which are behind and reaching forth unto the things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. This one thing he says I do, 
I count not myself to have apprehended. That means he did not count himself to be at a place where he has arrived. But he knew his need for Jesus Christ. He sung it this morning, Brother Denny. You sung it this morning. He, do you know your need for Jesus Christ and what He's done for you at Calvary? Because let me tell you something. When you come to that place, that press, where you understand and know and believe that you need Him to intercess in your life, God is faithful. God is faithful to meet your need. He's, he's well able to give you the grace He's well able to bring all those things that's wrapped up in our mind and in our thoughts. He's well able to cast those things away and give us peace. Peace. Wonderful peace. Hallelujah. That's coming down from the Father above. What a song, amen. But that song is true. We can have peace. Peace. Wonderful peace. But it's only found in one place. And that place is a place where you are going to be pressed like an olive. When that olive is pressed, it releases some good. It, it releases some good. Olive oil, and I'm just using that as an illustration, is one of the best things you could put in your body. It's great. Polyphenols, great for your blood, great for your vessels. It's great. It's great that you be pressed, but it's great that you keep being pressed and press in more and more. Because the more you press in, guess what, Brother Reed? The more you press in, the more you're going to know, the more you're going to be confident in what Christ did at the cross. The more you're not going to be worried about Everything that else is going on around us out there, Brother Stephen. Everything that's going on out there around us. Listen, and I know because I'm around it too. I know what the world does and I know what around us does. But even though around us is what's going on, our focus is to stay focused on what Christ has done. Because if we stay focused on what Christ has done for us, through the laying down of His life, that we might have the grace of God, guess what? Those things around us won't consume us, but then we'll be a witness to those things around us, and they might know Him, amen? They might know Him, and that's what it's all about at the end of the day. That's what it's all about, is they know Him, not you. Now, what I'm sitting here talking about is common to man. Man wants to be known in the world. Man wants to be known what he's done for society. Man wants to know what he's done for his community and all the things that he's built for the community. Man glory in these things. They boast in these things. And it's not common. I mean, it is common to man. The carnal mind always wants glory in itself. I, I see, listen, I know what I'm talking about. I've been, listen, I've been in the marketplace sitting with those of high statues in the community. And man, I knew I wasn't supposed to be there. Man, you talking about being convicted? Oh my goodness, Lord, man. I was like, Lord, okay. He said, I hadn't called you to dwell in the marketplace. I've called you to dwell in me. And I've called you to proclaim this gospel to those in the marketplace. Called you to declare the gospel to those who are wrapped up in all the things of the world. That they might be crucified from this world and this world unto them. Amen. That's what the gospel is about. And that gospel, my friend, it's an offense to the flesh. It is a great offense to the flesh. Amen. But I want to keep reading here. In verse 39, it says, And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from 
me. Amen. Amen. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. Now he prayed this, and he submitted to the Father, to his will. Amen. He pressed in, and he done exactly what the Father was well pleased with. But look in verse 40. And he came unto the disciples and found them asleep. He found them asleep. Let me tell you something. This ought to speak volumes to those that are in Christ Jesus and that are pressing in. You remember I said you're either pressing in or you're pressing out. There's your proof right there. Jesus left and went to pray. He pressed a little more further out. And as he pressed on out, they went to sleep. They went to sleep. And I'm going to tell you something this morning that you need to be aware of. When you begin to lose the focus of Christ and Him crucified, you will begin to fall asleep to the things of God. You will begin to let them things slip. This is why we are always to be pressing in to the things of God. Even out, listen, even, I, listen, I know I got to go to work and pay my bills and take care of my family. I got to get up, I got to put my boots on, I got to go. I understand that. But if I'm so consumed with that, that I can't make time to give subjugation uh, to the Lord, uh, that I can't dedicate some time to Him in prayer, in supplication, then what am I doing? I'm setting myself up treasures on earth rather than setting up things in heaven. Amen. Because I'm going to tell you something. When the last heartbeat happens and that last breath is drawn, it does not matter what you have built in your community. It doesn't matter how much you've paid in to the church. It doesn't matter if you bought 50 glass stained windows and put them in your church. It doesn't matter if your bank account is the biggest in the community. None of that's going to hold any weight. What's going to hold weight is what Christ done through the giving of His life and by your faith being in it. That is where God can go to work. That is where God can begin to give you grace to endure the things that are coming upon this nation. And let me tell you, my friend, I'm not here to preach doom and gloom. I'm not here to try to make you fearful. I'm just letting you know that the days ahead are not going to get better. They are going to get worse. But for those that are found faith in Christ Jesus and what He did at the cross, the Bible is clear that He will give us the grace to endure the afflictions, the grace to endure the droughts. The Bible says those that's planted in Christ is like a tree planted beside a river. When a drought comes, it don't affect that tree. I'm telling you. When the drought comes and everything else that's going to come, it don't have to affect you. And it's going to affect this nation, no doubt about it. But it ain't got to affect you. Because if, and here's why it, it don't have to affect you. Because what do you have your affections on? If your affections are set on the things that are here, then it's going to affect you. But if, it, if your affections are set on those things that are above, where Christ sit at the right hand of God, where you are hid with Him, those things don't have to affect you as, as, as hard as it does others. Amen. Praise God. But the Bible says, And He came unto the disciples and found them asleep, and said unto Peter, 
What? He says, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? Now, this is what Jesus said to Peter. He said, he said what? It, couldn't you, could you not watch with me for one hour? Now, I understand that a lot of people, you know, that Jesus was loving and that he was caring and that he, it, but let me tell you something. Jesus spoke with authority. The scriptures show that. And a lot of times what he said wasn't really, ple- wasn't really flesh pleasing to the people. But we got pastors and preachers and teachers out there today that are not willing to speak what the Word of God says and how it says it because they're scared of running people off. They're scared of losing a following. They're scared of what, whatever they're scared of. Really, they're just man-pleasers. And, 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 and they're exalting themselves rather than preaching the truth that men might know Him and be saved and start walking in the abundance of grace that Christ died to give them. Amen? But nevertheless, we still continue to preach this gospel. Hallelujah. And he says, what? Could you not watch with me one hour? Then he said this. He said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Now this is what Jesus told Peter. He said, watch and pray. Watch and pray. Man, you got 99.9% of the church out there is telling that you shouldn't be watching. You shouldn't be vigilant. You just do what you do. You just worry about what you do in your your congregation, your ministry. You don't worry about what everybody else is doing. That ain't what the Bible tells. That ain't what the Bible says. The Bible tells us to be watch. Watch and pray. Watch and pray. Paul said that he, he, that he, he preached, he teached, and he warned in every, uh, everywhere he went. Why are we speaking like this? Because the Scriptures speak like this. It says the Spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. The battle can be won only by our faith being placed exclusively in Jesus Christ and the cross. Which then gives the Holy Spirit the willingness and the latitude to come into the believer and equip him to do what God commands to be done. The Bible tells us in Romans that The hearer of the word is not just before God, but the doer of the law is. And when I I say law, I'm not speaking of the Ten Commandments. I'm speaking of the law of the, the, the law of the Spirit of life that is found in Christ Jesus. Listen, if your faith is right, listen, you I promise you, if your faith is in Him. There will be fruit that your faith is in Him. It's going to come. It's going to come, and people are going to know that you of Him. So, what does that mean to do? Or, uh, uh, am I justified by doing something? I'm justified by faith. But my faith without works is dead. That's what James said. Amen? So, what does it mean to be? It means to be led of the Lord and do as He commands, which is keep our faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ that He can continue to grow us, that He continue to to help us press more in to what Christ has done for us at the cross. Amen? It's not this... Listen, man, and I've heard... Listen, I've heard some of my Baptist friends tell me that, you know, it's automatic. You get saved, and it's, it's all Him. It's left up to Him now. There might be a little bit of inkling of truth to that. There might be a little bit, but there's one thing you got to get. There is 
an obligation that you have to meet for God to continue to work in you. If you don't keep your faith where Christ has performed that work in you, guess what? He's not obligated to continue that work in you. If your faith does not stay in what He has done to bring you to the place where you can walk in the newness of life, He's not obligated to give you grace to continue to do the work. Amen? He's only obligated to give you grace when you come to Him by the faith that He has died to make it a, a, a way of opening that you can come and receive grace. Don't you know that the Bible says that when He gave His life on the cross that the veil was ripped from the top to the bottom. That no man could have done that. We know this. Why was that veil ripped from the top to the bottom when Jesus gave up the Spirit? Why? Because now all men no longer had to go through a veil made by hands, but they could come to Jesus who has laid His life down and now enter into the things of God. They didn't have to go through a bunch of routine washings and religious motions and all the hype. They didn't have to do, you don't have to do any of that. What you have to do now is keep your faith where God has met your need. And God's met every man's need when Jesus laid down His life on that old rugged cross. That's where God met your need. It doesn't matter if it's depression. It doesn't matter if it's anxiety. It doesn't matter if it's uh, worrying and fretting and fear. No matter what it is, God met that need. And He met it at Calvary. He met it when He sent His only begotten Son into the world that you might be crucified with Him that you might have the power of God operating in you to keep you going forward, pressing toward the mark of the high calling that is found in Christ Jesus. Amen? And when you're not pressing, let me tell you something. You're going backwards. You're going backwards. Verse 42 says, He went away again the second time and prayed, saying, Oh, my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drank it. Amen. Your will be done. Let me tell you something. You're going to have to drink from the same cup. You're going to have to drink from the same cup. What's that mean? You're going to have to be crucified with him. You're going to have to be crucified with Him that God's will be done in your life. This is clear in Scripture. It's right there, amen. And He came, listen to it, in verse 34, and He came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Now the love of Jesus Christ, always ready to excuse weakness, for example, the lateness of the hour and the fact that they were sleeping of sorrow. And he left them and went away again, in verse 44, and prayed the third time, saying the same words, speaking to the Father. Then cometh he to his disciples and said unto them, Sleep. On now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand. And the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Listen to what he says in verse 46. He said, Rise, let us be going. Beholding, he is at hand who does betray me. The Spirit of the Lord showed Jesus what was coming. 
But do you see what Jesus said here? He said, rise, let us be going, beholding. It's time for the church to wake up. It's time for the church to wake up. The day's at hand. The day is at hand. It's time to rise up. And it's time to go. And it's time to behold the Son of God to the world, to your family, to your friends, to the, to the work people, where whoever you're around, God's got you there for one purpose. Amen. That you would be a representation of Christ. That you would be an ambassador of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's why He's got you there. That's why He's wanting you to press in this morning and not sleep. Rest in Christ absolutely. But don't let this gospel slip. Don't let this gospel slip and begin to give, give heed uh, to the things that are, that are coming around us, that the things that are going on around us. Give focus to what Christ did at the cross. Amen. We know that John, even John, the Bible says that there was no greater man than, than John. No greater minister than John. Remember the testimony that Jesus gave to John? And John, John began to doubt. John began to grow weary. Let me tell you something. Matthew 11. Let's turn over to Matthew 11. Let's read what it says there. But nevertheless, even though he grew weary, he always was comforted by the words of the Lord. And listen to what it says in Matthew chapter 11. We'll start. In verse 1. And it came to pass when Jesus has made an end of commanding his, this, his twelve disciples, he departed thence to teach and to preach in their cities. Now when John had heard in the prison the works of Christ, he, he sent two of his disciples and said unto him, Are you he who comes... Are, are you he who should come, or do we look for another? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Go and show John again. Now he said again. So John seen his works. John knew him. John confessed that he was the Lamb of God that would take away the sins of the world. And now here John is saying, Are you he? Or do we look for another? And, the, and, and no doubt that John was being pressed. He was being pressed being in that prison. He was being pressed and he began to start asking questions. But Jesus said, listen to what he said to him. He said, go and show John again those things which you do see and hear. Listen, and the he said... The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he whosoever shall be not offended in me. Amen. John heard those words, there's no doubt. That he began to, they began to, oh, he had a Holy Ghost shout right there in that jail. <laughs> I can guarantee you, when he heard those words, their faith began to come up. Faith began to boil up again. Amen. Thank God. And that's what we need. That's why it is important that we incline our ears to hear the gospel, that we can be encouraged to continue to fight the good fight of faith and to press in to the things of God. Amen. This is why Jesus 
encouraged us through the Scriptures with this illustration of Gethsemane being pressed. Even Jesus Himself, was. the Bible would, uh, would partake that He even he got to the point to where He was so pressed that He was sweating blood. That blood was actually coming out of his pores. Now you talking about being pressed. I couldn't fathom that. But nevertheless he said. Not, not, my, not I will. Not as I will. <laughs> but as you will. And if you want God's will. In your life. And, you, and, and, and I want to encourage those that may be watching uh, that uh, don't understand what God's will is in your life. It's very simple. The Bible says God wills that every man believe on him who he has sent. That's God's will. On, God, on man's life, on women's life, on children's life. That's God's will. God's will is that we believe in Him who He has sent. And we know why God sent Jesus into the world. Flesh. That He would do what? That He would lay His life down for the sheep. He would be that good shepherd, amen. Hallelujah. And he is that good shepherd, amen. He is that good shepherd, praise God. As I look at these words and what Jesus has done on the cross and I see all the illustrations, I'm reminded that when we think we come to the place where we don't need to press anymore, we be will begin to no longer give our ears to the gospel. What, ha what will happen is we will begin to give our ears to other things that may sound and look like wisdom and that might grab our attention but they don't have power to change. They don't have power to help us endure. They don't have power that God has gave. The power of God which, help us, which helps us to endure. I want to take you to the book of Job. If you would, turn to the 13th chapter of Job. And I, I know that you know the uh, the story of Job. If you don't, I'll, I'll run. I'll, I'll I'll run through uh, exactly what what happened to Job. You know that Job was uh, one of God's uh, prophets in the Old Testament, and the illustration was that Satan went to God and asked to tempt Job. And, and God told Job, you can touch the thing, you can, you can do all the things around him. You can touch his possessions, you can do whatever, but you can't touch him. So Satan, we know, went down. And Job lost everything he had. He lost everything. He lost his his sons, his daughters, his lands, his possessions, his house, his home, even his wife, after losing all this, would come to Job. And you know, Satan told God, he said, I can make him curse you. If, I am bad, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that's what he told God, I can make him curse you. And, and God said, go ahead. Go ahead, because God knew Job's heart. He knew it. Go ahead. The Bible says 
in 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Listen to what Job said. Now after, I just want to just illustrate some more things. Not only did Job lose everything that he had, all his livestock, his, his wife, his family, his possessions. But then, after losing those things, you had those of the community that said that they were of God come to this man and begin to accuse him. Well, this is why this is happening to you. Because you ain't doing this, you ain't doing that. This and that, this and that. And ain't that just like the church today. Man, when they see you down and out, they see you down in the ashes, here they come to just kick you right on while you're down. But let me tell you something. Faith in Jesus Christ, no matter how far you go down, He will always pick you back up. He will always pick you back up. Listen, This race that we're running, it ain't given to the swiftest. It's given to those who will run it with patience and will make the finish line. It doesn't matter if you make it second or 15th. What matters is you reach it. What matters is that you cross that finish line. Amen? That you make it all the way to the end. Because there have been many that have started this race but have lost wind. They've lost faith. Because of the cares of this life and the cares of riches and worldliness, the Bible says that it can be choked from us. It can be choked. And who I'm speaking to myself, let me tell you. I'm telling you, I'm, I, I, I ate this. I ate this myself. When I was reading these scriptures and the Lord began to deal with my heart, I began to look. You know, we begin to look at our wages. We begin to look at this. We begin to look at that. And you're thinking, well, man, I don't, I don't think I'm being treated fairly. Well, well, I don't think this. And I don't, you begin to start pondering on those things. And what happens is, when you begin to ponder on them things, you begin to, uh, doubt begins to set in. Bitterness begins to set in. Envy and strife and all the things that come with it. And then on top of that, you may see somebody else that's doing something wrong. But it looks like they're being blessed. You know what I'm talking about, don't you, Brother Reed? You look at somebody else's life and you're like, man, that man is a crook. And he's living over there on Boulevard and, and, and he's living, boy, he's got the, you, you just get all trapped up in that stuff. But that's what the enemy wants you to do. Is he wants you to get your eyes on the things of the world and off the things of God. And it can happen. To the best of us. But if we'll keep faith in what Christ did at Calvary and set our affections on those things above, when those temptations come, Jesus said, what did He say over in Matthew? What did He say? He said, watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. For the Spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Listen, if we think we're going to beat this thing with what we got going on, we are badly setting ourselves up for failure. Because we're not going to beat it. We've got to have the power of God. We've got to have the Spirit dwelling in us. But none of those things are accessed but by one place. And that's the place where Jesus gave his life. And that place, I'm going to tell you something, that place is a place of pressing. That that place is a place of affliction. That place 
is a place of an offense to the flesh. That's why flesh don't want to hear it. That's why flesh can go, uh, that's why flesh wants to go to another place where there's a gospel that's presented that does not attack the flesh. That's why you got churches that got the, 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 the pews are full, but there's no life that's been changed because they're hearing something other than what Christ has done for them at the cross that the power of God can go to operate in their lives is in their heart and keep them pressing forward and setting them free from what we was. Amen. You remember the scriptures? The Bible says, hey, he, it says in Romans 6, 17, that thank be unto God that I was the servant of sin but I have obeyed from the heart this form of doctrine. This form of doctrine that is being presented to you to this morning of Christ and Him crucified. Now being made free from sin, I have become a servant of righteousness. And it was all predicated on what? Believing from the heart. Not knowing, but believing. You, get, you need to know it. But you need to continue, you need to believe it as well. Amen. Amen. Job said this in 13, chapter 13, verse 14. It says, Wherefore do I take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in your in, in my hands? That's what that's the question. The appeal is now to God, for Job professed it by excusing his boldness. Verse 15. Though he kill me, yet will I trust in him, and I will maintain my own ways before him. Verse 16. He also shall be my salvation for an hypocrite shall not come before him I hear folks all the time say there's more hypocrites in the church than there is in the world I can't go to church man they're all hypocrites <laughs> what did Job say what did Job say <laughs> he said he said, for an hypocrite shall not come before him. Nothing shall come before what Christ did at the cross. It doesn't matter what Su Susie in over there and, 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 and this one's doing in, in, in the church. You press in. You continue to go forth. You continue to press in. Because your life could affect that hypocrite. Your life being sold out to what Christ did at the cross could affect that hypocrite. Amen? It could definitely deal with that heart and let that heart be touched by the power of God. Amen? But if you're going about blaming and gaming and passing this and doing that, listen, it has to hit here. It has to hit in the heart. Here, Job said in verse 17, Hear diligently my speech and my declaration unto your ears. Behold now, I have ordered my cause. I know that I shall be justified. Hallelujah. I know that I shall be justified by Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Job stood on the promises of the Lord through one of the greatest tests of all. You think about it right now. What if you wake up? What, what if you leave church today and you check your count and it's inconclusive? Nothing's in it. You can't get nothing. You got a quarter of a tank of gas you got two fishes in the freezer and two slices of bread in the, in the loaf. 
what you going to do? You're going to trust Him no matter what happens. Because let me tell you something, no matter what happens, God is well able to see us through. Job said, I know that I shall be justified. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, I know I shall be justified. Do you know today? Do you believe today that it was what Christ done for you at Calvary that you are justified, amen? That you are cleansed. The Bible says, I'll go back to it, amen. I just love to read it. Matthew, let's go back to where John the Baptist Jesus sent the disciples back to John. He said, the blind has received their sight. He said, the lame has walked. Glory to God. He said, the leopard is cleansed. He said, the deaf hear. Hallelujah. And the dead are raised. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. The poor have the gospel preached to them. Blessed is he who shall not be offended in me. Hallelujah. You don't have to be offended in Christ. All you have to do is be crucified with Him. Amen. If you're crucified with Him, you won't be offended in Him. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you're crucified with Him, you won't be offended in Him. The teens out here today, the teens and the young ones out here today, you got everything in the world pulling at you. Which way to go? What do I need to do? You got this, you got that. Let me tell you something. The first thing you need is Christ in your heart. You need Him in your heart. Because if you ain't got Him in your heart, it doesn't matter what you do in your life. Because that life will eventually come to an end. And without Christ and your faith in what He has done for you, the Bible says that way is a way of destruction. You don't have to go down a way of destruction. And at the beginning of this preaching, teaching, I said it, you're either doing one or two things. You're either pressing into the things of God and turning from the things of this world, or you will be found, listen to me closely, you will be found denying God. You will, you will flat foot be denying God if you're not pressing in. You'll come to the place where you'll begin to not believe Him, but deny Him. Why do I say that? Because let's see what Scripture says. Amen? Matthew chapter 26, where we started. Let's back up to 31. Amen? Let's back up to 31. Then said Jesus, everybody got it? You got it? Matthew 26, 31. Then said Jesus unto them, All you shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, I will smite the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered abroad. Jesus said that to the disciples. He said, tonight you will be offended in me. Jesus knew the heart of the men. He knew that when he would go to the cross and be smitten, that there wouldn't be many that would go with him. He said, all of you are going to be offended tonight because of what I will do. Because I'm going to be smitten. I'm going to give my life that you can have life. Hallelujah. I'm going to give my life on that cross that not only that you can have life, but you can have life more and more abundantly. That is a life free from the dominion of sin. 
That is a life that has free course to joy, to lift hands and worship, to give praise unto God no matter what's going on, to rejoice in the Lord when times are down. Hallelujah. That's what God desires in the life of the believer. Amen. Glory be to God. But listen to what happened here. He said that it, he said the flock shall be scattered abroad. But af, but after I am raised again, I will go before you in Galilee. And listen, oh what a promise that was. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh glory to God. He said, I will go before you in Galilee. Let me tell you something, church. He's going before you in Greenville. He's going before you in Leland. He's going before you in Winona. He's going before you wherever you are. He's going before you. And he is preparing the people to hear. You just need to go with what he's giving you. Amen. Don't twist it. Just keep preaching Christ crucified. Hallelujah. He's going before us. He's preparing the hearts. We just need to keep believing Him and keep preaching and keep standing firm in this gospel, hallelujah, and not turn back. Don't give your ears to the hypocrites. Don't give your ears to all the things that are going on around you, amen. amen. Glory to God. That's what He desires, amen. Listen to what Peter said. Peter, Peter answered in verse 33, Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of you, yet will I never be offended. What a boastful saying. But Peter, he didn't realize. He was just boasting in the flesh. He didn't realize it. But he would. He, he, he's going to realize it later on. Listen to what Jesus said to him. Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto you, this, that this night before the rooster crows, you shall deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die, it says, Though I should die with you, yet will I not deny you. Likewise, also said all the, all the disciples. All of them made a boastful statement. But we know the outcome of it. And let me say something to you. As I've been saying this whole morning, if you're not found pressing in, you're going to be found denying in. If you're not found pressing in to the things of God, what He has done for you through Jesus Christ, you're going to be found denying him. And let me say this, even if you have even if you have been found denying him, there is still grace. Oh, There is still grace that God will draw you to the place of repentance that he will restore you. Amen. No matter what it is, there is still God's desire that all men know this truth and be born again and be saved and come to the place where they see their need for Him. Amen. 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 But if you keep getting trapped up with all the things that are going on in the world, all the thoughts, all the imaginations, wondering what you're going to do with your life, let me tell you, give your life to Jesus. Give your life to Jesus, Christ and Him crucified. Let Him do what He desires in your life. As Jesus said it, this comes from the words, comes out of the mouth of the Savior Himself. Not as I will, but as you will. Amen. So if you're wondering what you're going to make of your life, let me tell you, you're going to make your life a mess without Jesus Christ. That's what's going to happen. Now, I'm speaking to you young folks that's got the rest of, you think you got the rest of your life ahead of you. 
I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to all that would hear today that you think you got the rest of your life ahead of you. Listen, what you do with your life is going to be made. Listen, you're going to make it. You're going to make a miserable life without Jesus Christ and what he did at the cross. But if you'll let Jesus Christ come into your heart and into your life and you'll let him do exactly what he desires to do in you, listen, there's a place where you can eat from the, from the fruit and the fruit can be produced in you. You can begin to, to eat of that uh, body and, and drink of that blood, amen. And I'm fixing to get to that. That's where I'm headed. Amen. Because the Bible tells us uh, before I head that away, I want to head over right over to the place where the Bible tells us what Christ has done for us. Amen. Second Corinthians two and fourteen tells us this as well. Praise God. There's a place where there can be plenty, amen, where you can have it. And you can have more. Listen, you just got to press in. You just got to press in, amen. Glory to God. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 2, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Listen, I'm going to read this a little bit here. It says, Now, thank be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and made manifest the savor of His knowledge by us in every place. Now, here we go. Now, we just said, Jesus told the disciples... He says, rise up, let's go and behold. Rise up, let us be going and beholding. Amen? Amen. So, right here, the Bible tells us that and making manifest the Savior of His knowledge by us in every place. God desires, no matter where you're at, that His knowledge, amen, what is God's knowledge? What is God's understanding? It is Christ and Him crucified. It's no other understanding but that. That's what He desires that men know. That's the only place that man can be redeemed. That's the only place that man can be changed. That's the only place the heart can be made conformable and the body conformable unto the death. Amen. Where life can spring up. Amen. It says, for we are unto God a sweet Savior of Christ in them who are saved and in them who perish. Now, don't get it twisted here. This is not saying that, that God uh, is uh, pleased with men perishing. No. What He's pleased with is that man has had the opportunity. Come on now that they have had the opportunity to believe the gospel, that the gospel was preached. That in itself is a sweet savior of aroma in the nostrils of God. That's the place where God is pleased. For the preaching of the cross is to them who perish foolishness, but unto us who are saved is the power of God. Now the Bible says that it is by preaching that pleases God. That's in that same, and that's 1 Corinthians chapter 1, amen? That's, it's, it's all right there, that it pleases God. Let's, let's go over there and look at that right quick. So I don't... Yes, 1 Corinthians 1 and 21. For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. You see where it's going? The world by wisdom. So that tells us that the world and carnal and fleshly man will be looking for wisdom, but not the wisdom of God. And by the wisdom that they are searching for and diligently seeking for, they can't know God. Can't know God outside of what Christ did at the cross. That's the place where the Spirit was given that we might be led into all truth. There's no other Spirit by, that was given that will lead us into all truth but by Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's where He gave up the Spirit that, we might, that He might send us a helper. Amen? And that helper will do what? He will lead us 
into all truth. We don't have to be children tossed to and fro about what's right, what's wrong, what's the gospel, what ain't the gospel, is that right or is this wrong? Is he saying that? You ain't got to get trapped up in all that. You just, you can stay focused in the truth that the Spirit's leading you in, which is always leading you unto the death, amen, of Jesus Christ. That his life may be made manifest in your life. Quit giving your ears to anybody and everything that says Jesus. Because I'm telling you, the world has their own Jesus. The carnal and apostate church has their own Jesus. But we preach the Jesus of the Scriptures. Amen? The Jesus of the Scriptures. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The Bible says this right here. It says, For we are unto God a sweet Savior of Christ in them who are saved and in them who perish. And to the one, we are the Savior of death unto death. This refers to those who reject the cross. And to the others, the Savior of life unto life. All life comes through the Spirit from Christ and by the cross. Amen. Romans 8 and 2. It says, And who is sufficient of these things? This refers to the gospel which is so mightily to save one from the death, from dead. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, For we are not as many who corrupt the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as of God, in the sight of God, speak we in Christ. We're not of many of those that corrupt the Word of God. But everything that was said this morning, everything that was presented to you this morning, it was presented in the sight of God. It was judged according to God's Word. It was illustrated by the, the Spirit of God and not by the Spirit of man. Because the Spirit of man will never take you to the place where you are offended. Where flesh is being put to death. The Spirit is the one that brings us to death. Of, when I say death, I'm speaking of what Christ did at the cross. That's where, that's where the Spirit's taking us. If we're not being took there, let me tell you something. It don't matter how pretty the preacher is behind the pulpit. It doesn't make no difference how well coordinated he is in his speech either. Or his teaching. If the spirit behind it. Let me say this to you church. Wake up. Wake up. If the spirit behind it is not bringing you to the place of death. Where you are crucified with Christ. Amen that the life of Christ might be made manifest in your mortal body, then what happens? I can tell you what happens. You're walking in a way that is corruptible, and it's deceitful, and it's damnable, and it ultimately will lead to destruction. Amen? Amen. But thank God we have the Word of God dipped in the blood of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. That place, that place where we are pressed beyond measure, where we are pressed on every side. Hallelujah. But we don't have to be pressed out. We can, we can have the grace of God to help us in the days ahead to press in. Because I don't know what's going to happen in the days ahead. I don't. But I know according to the Scripture 
that we are living in the very last days and that the days that we are living in is perilous times. It's times where there is a great falling away of the faith. There's a, it's the time where men are being tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. And this is why we're, this is why the Spirit is desperately preaching and reaching and warning today that you incline your ears to those that preach the truth and the truth only. And don't be found giving your ear to fables and teachers. Uh, you know, the Bible talks about that in Timothy where it says that the day will come where they will, uh, let's turn over there, amen. Timothy, I think it's Second Timothy, amen. Hallelujah. I might be wrong. It might be First Timothy. No, it's Second Timothy, I believe. Yeah, it's Second Timothy. The Bible uh, talks about Yes, amen, that's right. Chapter 3. This know also that in the last day perilous times shall come. That's a time of difficulty and dangerous times for the Christian. That's a time where many are being deceived and being removed from the power of God. That's the grace of God at work in your life. Why is it that these things are happening? Listen to what it says in verse 2. It says, for men. So it's men. It's men. It's men who call themselves preachers, teachers, apostles, prophets, evangelists. They've given their self that name. Amen? It's men. It's men. Who call themselves Christians. Amen? shall be lovers of their own selves, covetousness, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers. It says incompetent, forced. It says despisers of those who are good, tra traitors, High, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Here we go again. Denying the power thereof. You know, once again, you know, I, I, as, you've, as the Spirit has been constantly putting focus on denying Jesus Christ. What happens when one starts denying Jesus Christ? He refuses to press in to the death of Jesus. He begins to get offended because he wants, his, he wants to have rule over his own life and his own will and his own way. God desires that it be his will working in your life, not your own. Amen? So we see here in Scripture that uh, they have a form of godliness, but they have denied the power thereof. The Bible says, from such turn away. Now the church today, oh, I'm preaching. I said the church today says, no, you don't have to turn away from them. No, if you turn away from them, they're not going to hear the gospel. The Bible says turn away from them. No, you should stay and you should endure. Let me tell you something. Job said, I ain't putting a hypocrite before him. I'm not putting. I'm not putting one that's denying the power thereof before him. No, sir. I'm going to stay the course by the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, by my faith there in his death. I'm going to continue to fight this good fight of faith and press in, letting those things that are behind stay behind and I'm going to continue to press in to the mark and the prize of the high calling that's found in Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you, my friends, brothers and sisters, all those out there that might be watching, if you're not pressing in, 
you are going to press out. And eventually, you're going to come to the place where you're going to deny the one that died and gave himself for you. That's the only option you got. You're either going to keep this faith and keep pressing in, or you're going to wind up pressing out and, and ultimately denying the power thereof. Just as Peter did when he denied Jesus Christ. But thank God. I said, but thank God. Even if you come to that place where you have denied Him, that God is so merciful, that He is so gentle and meek <coughs> and loving, that He would send repentance to you that you might come back to the Father. Hallelujah. It's not over for you. Even if you have denied Him, it's not over for you. You can come today and you can establish that relationship back just like it was the day you walked away from it. Hallelujah. That's what's good about this gospel. Glory to God. That's what's so good about this gospel. Now does that lead? Now does that? Uh, am I preaching that we should continue? That we should do those things and then just come? No. No. I'm not making room for sin. I'm making room for you to repent and believe the gospel and continue to believe the gospel that you're found in the faith, that you're found in the power of God, and not just having a form. Amen. Glory to God. And that's what we need. That's what we need in these last days. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us, he told Timothy, and we'll close with this, amen. Singers and musicians, you can come on up. We'll close with this. I hope and pray to God that I said something this morning that would stir up your faith, that would cause you to press in to the things of God and not look back, <clears throat> and not be caught off guard as it, as it pertains to the things of this world. Don't, don't, don't give heed to the things of this world. Give heed to what's being said and what Christ has done for you at the cross. Let Him continue to mold you. Let Him continue to keep you on that potter's wheel. Let Him get these things out of you, amen. And he will do it, amen. But you got to press in to it, amen. Paul told Timothy in, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, he says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. And the things that you have heard of me among many witnesses, he said, the same commit unto faithful men who shall be able to teach others. It says, you... Speaking to you. You therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man who wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he might please him who has chosen him to be a good soldier. Amen. Glory to God. The Scriptures are clear. The Scriptures are are clear. There's no disputing what Scripture says here. Amen. The Bible tells us that the man who wars, what's, what's warring? Fighting that good fight of faith. Fighting that good fight of faith. The man who wars, who's fighting the good fight of faith that's in Christ Jesus, entangles himself not in the affairs of this life. Now I hear a lot of people, I've heard ministers say, well, they, man, that don't mean that you get caught, that you, you don't get involved in politics. Let me tell you something. I vote. I do. I'm not against voting. But let me tell you something. Don't let that wrap you up. Don't let that wrap you up. Because it don't matter who's sitting in the White House. What matters is who's sitting on the throne of your heart. Because that's where it's going to end. Now, I, does that mean that I want somebody in the White House that's doing halfway right? Amen. Yes, I do. Amen. But I know that this country ain't going to get nobody sitting up there that's going to do halfway right until Jesus comes, and he's going to do it all right. 
Amen. He's going to do it all right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So whatever's on your heart this morning, I want you to press in this morning to the things of God. Let the Lord touch you this morning. Let Him do the work that He desires to do. Come to the altars and say, not as I will, but as you will. Let the Lord touch you this morning. He's here to touch. He's here to heal. He's here to bring back all that the enemy has stolen and all that the enemy has taken away. He's here to restore you back. Amen. He's here to do that work. Amen. We thank you, Father, this morning for your grace, Lord. Thank you that you laid your life down for us. Come, ask, and you shall receive. That's what the Bible tells us to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
grace. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God's grace. Oh, thank you, Lord. Yes. Hallelujah. Grace. Grace that is greater than all our sin. And that grace was showed when Jesus gave his life on Calvary. The Bible says that's greater than all sin. There's no sin that can overthrow what Jesus did at Calvary. But what he did at Calvary overthrew and overthrow everything that the enemy has against you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Whoa, what a presence of the Lord we've had today, Lord. We asked you, Lord, today, Lord, just to, Lord, to just touch us, Lord, to continue to move, Lord, as we depart, Lord. We just thank you that your grace can flow in our hearts as we go, Lord, about our uh, walk with you, Lord. Thank you in Jesus' name. I'm asking you to uh, encourage somebody to come back 
Next Sunday, we have a homecoming, amen. It's the 17th annual homecoming meeting, amen. Brother Jonathan and uh, Sister Amy Medinsky will be here with us, amen. And uh, what a time in the Lord that will be. Bring something, bring whatever you want to eat. Just make sure you bring enough of it to feed you and maybe one other person, amen. Hallelujah. We love you. God bless you. Be with us next Sunday. Amen. Until then, keep fighting the good fight of faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Love you. God bless you, each and every one. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.